We make a triode by inserting a grid of wire between the anode and the cathode. In practice, this grid is coaxial, as was discussed in the previous video. In a triode, this is usually simply called the grid, but in multigridded valves like a tetrode or pentode, it is called the control grid. The grid controls the flow of electrons between the cathode and the anode. By making the grid progressively more negative, we repel more electrons, stopping them from reaching the anode, until, by making the grid very negative, we effectively shut them off. We must avoid making the grid positive, as doing so would attract electrons to it, causing a current to flow through the grid, overheating it and potentially destroying the valve. As you can probably surmise from the diagrams, since the grid is just suspended in a vacuum, it has a very high input resistance, rather like a MOSFET. If we plot the relationship between grid voltage and anode current, we get a graph which looks rather like the Chaffet graph that's shown on the screen now. And in fact, just as we did with FETs, we can designate a transconductance, which in valves is also called the mutual conductance, in much the same way. Chi m is equal to delta Ia over delta Vg. And we can estimate it in the same way as we did for FETs. However, when we look at the full characteristic of a triode, it looks quite different from an FET or a BJT as shown on the screen. The shape is so different because unlike a transistor, where the main current, that is the collector current or the drain current, is independent of the main supply voltage, that's the collector emitter voltage or the drain source voltage, in a triode, the anode voltage does depend on the anode current. This interaction, in some ways, makes a triode not quite as good an amplifier. For example, it introduces nonlinearity and other issues, which we'll explain a little bit later. The cause of this interaction is that the cathode, grid, and anode can all influence each other through their electrostatic fields. Another way of saying the same thing is that they're all capacitively coupled together, i.e. there's a capacitance between them all. We can define a figure to say how much this voltage-current interaction is, as shown, Ra is equal to delta Va over delta Ia, and this is called the anode resistance. Since anode voltage also varies with grid voltage, for the reason that we've just explained, it's useful to put a figure on this as well. This is called mu, and is equal to delta Va over delta Vg, and is sometimes called the amplification factor. All three of the terms that we've just described are related by the following equation, Gm is equal to mu over Ra. Apart from the voltage-current coupling just described, the inter-electrode capacitance has other disadvantages as well. The two most important being poor high-frequency response. These capacitances are after all just parasitic capacitances, akin to the Miller capacitance discussed in previous videos. The second is potential instability, in other words oscillation, again caused by the capacitances, but this time causing unwanted feedback between different parts of the circuit. This is not to say that the triode is not a useful device. It's easy to design with, as we'll see shortly, and with careful internal modifications, it can even be made to operate at frequencies into the UHF or even microwave range.